This reminds me of the old days of artists talk on art. And the last uh, couple of years that I did it, we had entered the 21st century, or we were almost there. And I said, welcome to the 21st century of art. So we're almost now, we could say we're almost to the 22nd century. And we are over Excuse 50 me? years old as Viridian artists. So I think we might be, Viridian might be one of the oldest artist owned galleries. Which some people say, are you proud of that? And I would say yes, because it ain't easy. All right. I have two poems to read today. One is by one of our artists, Arlene Finger, and who's in this current show. And the other one is almost a poem that I wrote that was part of a performance piece. So I think I'll read Arlene's first, because it's really beautiful. Is this something of a trend to write a poem instead of drawing? There is a place of me that is a longing. I want to go home. To a place of sweet remembrances. To a place of sweet caresses and coziness. There is a place within the walls of hardwood floors where life is an open door. Thank you, Arlene. This one is a poem by me, but I call it maybe a poem. And it was a piece that I composed for a performance that I did in that exhibition that we'll be discussing on Monday. Lost memories of summers at the beach before sunscreen and contaminated waters. When fish could eat food, not plastic and gulls were not covered with tar. Memories of family gatherings innocent of the pollution to come. Now, surrounded by the refuse of cities and people, symbols of the destruction we have committed in the name of civilization and progress. Hissing, screeching, wailing waters, ocean gyres growing like islands of our lost dreams. Dreams no longer to be found among the refuse, extinct and non-recoverable, for it's nearly too late. My name is Bernice Craver. I'm a recent widow. And I'm here tonight with my dear accompanist, my flowers or fruits, which do prefer Mary. Okay. I have the words to I my song here, and you can follow along to life. Wasn't a guess. It is called Widow's Peak, and that's P-E-A-K or a peak, P-E-E-K, either one. Now there is a German word here in honor of um, Arnold Schurmer. At a line, which means alone. Oh, oh, okay. Now, you can follow along, and the tune will be I will try to sing it. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. To uh, I am a fine musician, if you all remember that. I am the widow Kramer. Alone, a line, new name, er, makes nonsense to me, no, I was once a wed, oh, <laughs> down the aisle I wandered, a girl from Washington left Department of Interior to find a life superior. But now the widow Craver is my new name. <laughs> hey lady, hey mama, hey sweetie, yes ma'am, no man misses. Nomenclatures mention no more. Does wilting, wallowing, wailing. Widow Kramer is 
it's my new name. Oh.
and that the story could very well have been mine. I never openly cried at an opera before until Friday evening of last week. My name is Eileen. I did the painting over there of the women and the two birds. But uh, this poem is not about that. I think this painting. Uh, I painted, I've been painting uh, a series of women for many years now. And one of the paintings that I painted is this one here. There's some more postcards over there. Um, it's a fairly large painting, so I couldn't bring the painting with me. It's uh, 3 feet by 65. And um, a friend of mine, <coughs> well, she became a friend of mine because I went to Costa Rica many times so for 13 years, and I met a poet there. And her name is Eileen Kennedy, and so far she's written 15 poems to each of or to some of my paintings. Yeah. So um, anyway, I'd like to read one of the poems that she did for this particular painting called Paradise Journey. <clears throat> and her name is Eileen Kennedy. She's published uh, two books. So I'm very honored that she took the time to do this. So I see two things at once. The water and the heads of five women. The ocean that sends an arrogance of land. The ocean that erodes rocks. The ocean not embedded by moonlight caresses. The women different colors, yet the same. The women precariously perched in this world, yet navigating from danger to a new home. The sea manners reaching up to block their passing. The clouds a depressing blue-gray, waiting to pounce. The women contrast their color, their steadfastness, with blue rain. The water grows, expands, a slithering sea serpent. The women endure the, the crossing. I want to write this so I disappear into the poem, and the painting remains with the women migrating to safety. I want to write this poem so, I swallow, so it swallows me and the excess water of the world. I want to write this poem so the blue and ochre colors wash the words. I'm reading a poem for Catherine Lazur, whose piece is on that wall. It's textile or fabric, just purple and black and blue and green. So this is Catherine's poem. Angel fish and silver smiths lie in shiny graves together in the bottom of the sea. All the starfish were invited to the wake. They danced gracefully, swaying in a mel melancholy way, their arms curving to an ancient rhythm. The soft shell crabs had shed their shells and started to weep plump pink pearls. The lobsters began a reluctant minuet, trailing their heavy tails behind them. Hearts were sinking deeper into the cold ocean floor. There was no letting up on the sorrow. No one was kicking up their heels exactly. The eels came late to the ceremony. They were not accustomed to requiems and such and had not RSVP'd. They weren't sure of their required dress code. <laughs> Was it dare to get to wear heels? <laughs> One thing's for certain, certain, your mascara was sure to smear. <laughs> the seahorses' link tails twirled and blew culpa blue bubbles and emerald bubbles, which swirled in all directions. All were greatly consoled at the arrival of the jellyfish for their rhythms, their hypnotic, otherworldly dance moves, the way they undulated their translucent silken skirts, made the onlookers sigh and shiver. The male bodies of the moon jelly, the purple jello, jelly, the flower hat jelly, and the lion's mane jelly constantly in flux defied a fixed state so the mourners could get out of their skins, shed the carapace of their mercury grief, rigid, confining metallic like stainless steel. 
While all were looking up at the dancers, rapt transfixed the old bronze bell told slowly 67 times, once for each angelfish and once for each silversmith, whose silvery, slippery days had come to a blackened end. Hi, I'm Linda. I um, did the portrait by Bernice of Alice Paul. And my poem is from a few years ago. It's dedicated to my mother, who um, had me when she was 18 because uh, it was the 1950s. And my brother very soon thereafter and had to get married before she wanted to. She was an artist, a talented artist that um, stopped her practice to be a housewife. And I'm very indebted to her for supporting us. So the poem is called Probably Not, spelled N-O-A-T. If I wish three times with fingers crossed, don't step on a crack or look back, it will pass over. Heredity passes down. Cells divide or multiply in an orderly fashion or twist ferociously. Did I multiply and divide in her in an orderly fashion? Probably not. <laughs> the two of us, just me and my brother, disrupted the order one after another. The two, two, two of us. One must pretend not to care or amend previous wrongs. She seems I benign, but in relativity. Remaining still are the aches, the backs, the knees, the pleas and tees, the lipsticks, hairpins, and tight sweaters. But wishing will change or rearrange neither cell nor egg. My piece is that piece right there. Red light box. Oh, black box. So this is called, On This the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of the Slavery and Transatlantic Slave Trade. And it's called An American Trade. Searching. Found. The inventory of the property of the estate of James F. Slater, 1839. 508 quarter box of cigars, $1,207. Two whole box of cigars, $2,000. 82 boxes tobacco, $1,107.50. Three 10 boxes tobacco, $35. 120 gallons vinegar, $30. 48 shoe strings at 30 cents. $1440. 10 rims writing paper, $40. 50 rims wrapping paper, $110.75. One large mirror, $15. Four lamps at $2 each, $8. Two tin oil stands, $10. Two pistols, $15. One shotgun, $10. Seven bottles Muscatel wine at 25 cents, $1.75. 11 bottles cordial at $1, $11. One home and a lot, $1,100. Negro woman, Caroline, $700. Negro boy, Louis, $500. Negro boy, Joseph, $250. Negro girl, Mary, $500. Negro Girl Allegra, $400. Caroline was my great, great, great grandmother. Allegra, her daughter, my great, great grandmother. James F. Slater was her father. Alonzo, her son, was my great grandfather. They, the three, Caroline, Allegra, Alonzo, were born enslaved in the lands of the Cherokee and the Creek, renamed and resettled, becoming one of 13. Perhaps Caroline's mother or grandmother had been born free 
in some other place, across the expanse of ocean, the stars of a different sky, speaking Yoruba, Igbo, Akan, Kula, before the chains and leg irons, before the auction block, before the trail of tears, before men sold and enslaved their own children, before I became me. Thank you.